Mailbag time here on Falcons today. Today's show was filmed, by the way, during our live show, which airs every single Thursday at 5 p.m. Eastern. So tune in if you want to be on next week's mailbag. But first question comes in from Dat One Falcons fan. Here's my 2024 outlook. Get Russell Wilson and draft Jaden Daniels. Keep Ritter as an emergency backup. Trade for Aaron Donald and Joey Bosa and anything else that will help the team in the future. That's one hell of a plan. Um, let's kind of break it down bit by bit really quickly. I think it's very feasible that the Falcons get Russell Wilson. I don't think that's a stretch. I don't think that's a long shot. I think he gets released by Denver, and if Atlanta's top one or two options, however they may many be, ahead of Russell Wilson, all fall through, I could see Russ being the next best option. I don't know if they would draft Jaden Daniels. Well, I don't think signing Russell Wilson gets in the way of drafting Jaden Daniels if Jaden Daniels were to fall to them at number eight. I don't think they would sign Russell Wilson and then trade up for Jaden Daniels. But if they are shocked to see him available at like pick six, yeah, maybe they'd jump up from eight to six and then go get their quarterback who sits behind Russell Wilson for a year, if that. Trade for Aaron Donald and Joey Bosa. I don't think you can pull up both trades. You might have to pick just one. I don't think Aaron Donald likely leaves L.A., but maybe he is really, really anxious to rejoin Raheem Morris. Joey Bosa, I think the Chargers will hold on to. Harbaugh, Ohio State, maybe he doesn't like him. I'm not quite sure, but I think he does not. Harbaugh does not want to go into L.A. and go, let's get rid of our best players as my first business of operation. And then finally, add anything else to help the team in the future. Yeah, that sounds pretty good to me. Young Falcon 12, what do you, oh, right on time. What do you think about trading for Joey Bosa? So we got a couple people thinking about adding Joey Bosa to the squad. Let's look at Joey Bosa's numbers over the last couple of seasons because the issue with Joey Bosa has been the lack of availability, right? That's been the biggest hurdle. Last two years, nine games and five games. But when he played 16 games in 2021, he put up really good numbers. 10 and a half sacks, 51 tackles. Is that a typo? Seven four. I don't, I don't know the type. Seven forced fumbles. Like Joey Bosa, when healthy, I don't think he's the one of the top three edge rushers in our game. But I do think he is a top ten edge rusher if he plays all seventeen games. So if Atlanta feels confident that Joey Bosa can rehab and gets good word on his medical progress, and if the Chargers go, listen, we just got to clear our books a little bit. New guy in charge and. If Harbaugh does decide, I do want to move on from Bosa, and the Falcons can get him for a third, I don't want to overpay because I'm worried, very worried about how much availability he'll bring to Atlanta, but a third for Joey Bosa, I'm game. Now let me know, would you trade for Joey Bosa? Yes or no? Get in the comment section right now and chime in. I wouldn't do it for a first or a second. I would do it for a third, though. Moving on to our next question here on our live mailbag in just a moment, comes in from Twist Music. Instead of trading for a second and a third for Fields, why not spend a fourth or a fifth for Hendon Hooker, who, ha who also has a year left in his rookie contract, who could produce the same, if not more, than Fields? So Hendon Hooker actually has three more years left on his rookie contract. Um, and I don't think the Lions want to move on from him. Right? They, they drafted him in the third round last year out of Tennessee. I think they kind of want to see it through. Now, they had a great year out of Jared Goff, but it might not be about Hendon Hooker not being able to start in Detroit. Teddy Bridgewater is retiring, and every single NFL team better have learned from 2023 how valuable it is to have a good backup quarterback. Because the last thing you want is your season to go down the drain because your starter went down for four, five, six games, and your backup went 1-4, and 1-5 and five in that stretch. So if they think Hendon Hooker is a good backup, they're not going to trade him for a 4th or a 5th just to draft a new quarterback at the 4th or 5th and hope he's just as good as Hendon Hooker, given how difficult it is to draft quarterbacks that are good in Day 3. So my guess is the Lions, they want to hold on to Hooker. AFX Apocalypse. What's going on, dude? This is a bold take, but what about Trey Lance? I, I actually don't think it's as bold as you might think AFX. The Cowboys used a third to get Trey Lance out of San Francisco, and my guess is they want to maybe see that go through a little bit longer, right? I don't think they traded for Trey Lance because they thought this could be a Dak Prescott replacement one day. I think they saw it as a really high ceiling just in case 
things didn't go well with Dak. And at the very worst, we've got a good backup. Again, this is going to be a big theme this offseason. Teams investing in their backup quarterback position. Because GMs, they put together this incredible roster in their eyes. But all of it hinges on the quarterback staying healthy. And all their work is for nothing. If the backup takes over and they lose four games in a row. And everything else was first nothing. All right, before we move on to the rest of the questions on today's show, I do have to tell you guys about our sponsor today, which is Game Time. So if you are thinking of going to the big game at the last possible moment, get with Game Time right now and use code VEGAS100 to get $100 off. We all know that tickets to the big game are not the cheapest thing in the world, but if you're a spur-of-the-moment kind of person, you're like, F it, I want to go right now, well, why not just save $100 at the very least by using code VEGAS100? Now, Game Time also has tickets on every other event out there, right? We're talking Hawks games, Brave Spring Training, Fox Theater events, whatever you want to do in your local area, make sure you download the Game Time app and then use code FALCONSCHAT for $20 off. So download Game Time today and use that code Falcons chat for $20 off your first purchase. Terms apply, but once again, all that information is in the comments and description of today's video. Shout out to Game Time for supporting us here at Falcons today. Clout on twos. What will it take to get Justin Jefferson? I don't think the Minnesota Vikings would trade Justin Jefferson without getting a top 10 pick in return so that they can immediately draft Roma Dunze or Malik Neighbors. That would, that would have to be under the assumption that Minnesota goes, we don't want to pay Justin Jefferson the greatest contract in wide receiver history because we don't think we're going to be competitive for the next two or three seasons. So let's try and reset a little bit and go cheap at wide receiver. Personally, I think Minnesota's going to pay him. But if they don't, Maybe it's Atlanta's eighth overall pick this year, which, let's be honest, if Justin Jefferson entered this draft this year, where would he get taken? I don't think he leaves the top five. So, first overall pick this year, number eight, and probably next year's first round pick. Two first rounders for Justin Jefferson, one of them being top ten, and I think the Vikings would at least consider that option if you really did want to trade for him. I don't think it's going to happen, though. Kaysen Marchbanks, if we sign slash trade for a QB and sign an edge rusher like Chase Young or someone like that, would you draft a wide receiver with our first pick? So let's go with what you're describing here as they get Justin Fields or Russell Wilson. Doesn't matter which one. And then they go out and get maybe Chase Young, as you put it. I could see them very well using that first round selection on a wide receiver. I know everyone is so focused on the edge position. But keep in mind, it's February right now. Like, Don't get so focused on drafting for need when it's February. Focus on drafting for a best player available. Because the needs for the Atlanta Falcons are going to change through free agency. If they go out and sign Josh Allen, everyone that said you have to draft Edge in this year's draft is going to look a little bit silly, right? Because they all of a sudden don't need Edge as much as they need other positions. So until free agency is over... Don't look at mock drafts and drafts as drafting for need. Look for the best player, right? Go look at previous drafts and be like, I can't believe this team passed on that guy. Oh, that's because that year they really needed a corner. Yeah, and then they passed on Justin Jefferson. Like, what were they thinking? Well, they had two good wide receivers at the time. So what? He's Justin Jefferson. If you think Malik Neighbors or Roma Dunze is going to be the next wide receiver that transcends this league, don't pass on them because you're like, we really like what we have going after Drake London. Fuck that. Go get the best player available in the top 10 of the draft. UGA homegrown. Any chance of a Jerry Judy trade? I would say there's a chance. I don't think there's a 0% chance. I think there would be interest on both ends, right? Atlanta has one wide receiver in Drake London under contract for 2024. And the Denver Broncos have been getting lots of phone calls about Jerry Judy for over a year at this point. And this past season, Jerry Judy, well, I don't think he showed Denver enough to believe that he can at least begin, be, again, the topic of trade conversations this offseason. Now, last year, the Broncos reportedly wanted a first 
or a second and a player. And no one offered that. But maybe this year, with his value down because he's got one less year on his rookie contract, a fully guaranteed fifth-year option at $12.9 million, and he comes off a low year playing all 16 games and only scoring two touchdowns, a team like the Falcons could call and say, we'll give you a third, and the Broncos go, we're really short for picks, and we are trying to do a rebuild, and we don't have a lot of picks to do it, so if this is the best offer we're going to get, we'll do it. And maybe Jerry Judy returning to the Southeast is exactly what he needs. So let me know, would you trade for Jerry Judy? I'm definitely interested in Jerry Judy for the right price. I know that it has not been a fantastic four years in Denver, but it hasn't been a complete abomination. And if I think about what Jerry Judy did so well at Alabama when he won the Blitnikoff Award, it was he was able to beat his man at the line of scrimmage in the first second, right? The moment the ball was snapped. And now I think about what Russell Wilson did so well in Seattle, which was extend plays, right? Be a magician, improvise. And after holding on to the ball for six seconds, he chucks it deep to Tyler Lockett or Doug Baldwin. That's not really what Jerry Judy did so well, right? Jerry Judy wants the ball one and a half seconds after the ball is snapped because he's already beaten his man. But Russ didn't really lean into that style of Judy or that strength of Jerry Judy. So maybe that's a reason why Judy has been a bit underwhelming in Denver. And in Atlanta, they lean into his strengths a little bit more. He'd have more success. Mellon Walter, trade for Fields, sign Higgins and Allen, use draft to bolster the defense slash get depth, and use remaining cap to retain key free agents, and the Lombardi is ours. Yeah, um, you might have some issues with steps two and three of signing Higgins and Allen. I don't think Jacksonville is going to let Josh Allen walk out the door very easily. They want to bring him back. So unless the Falcons truly make an offer that Jacksonville will not compete with, I think he's likely staying in Duval. As for T. Higgins, I've heard he has interest in the Tennessee Titans. Right, He's from Knoxville. His old OC just went to Tennessee. Now, money talks, and that can easily change minds, but he first and foremost wants to stay in Cincinnati. The good news is the Bengals, their ownership is by far the poorest of all ownership in the NFL. Their business is the Bengals. That's it. So they don't have a lot of guaranteed money to spend, and he's looking for the guaranteed cash. And they just spent a lot of it on Joe Burrow, and now they have to spend a lot of it on Jamar Chase. So the rest of your plan looks great. I'm not so confident about the Josh Allen part. It would be really cool. Don't get me wrong. Just don't put all your eggs in that basket. Lee from the Raptors. Grab get along the way. This is the wide receiver South Carolina. Uh, the, the wide receiver from South Carolina who was better than Spencer Rattler, I think I'm going to say very confidently. I'm going to say it with my chest right now. He was better than Spencer Rattler. So I, he didn't have the greatest senior bowl uh, from what I remember. And I'm interested in him maybe round three, not so much round one or round two. Uh, Mr. Rose RA, and then I think we had a super chat from Adam earlier too. Uh, Mr. Rose, or Mr. Jose, I'm sorry. Love from Argentina to all of to you all. If we go Justin Fields, he is such a dual threat QB. Are we hurting our air threat? I don't, I don't think so. I, I think Justin Fields as a passer has been heavily discounted in terms of how valuable he is and how good he is. He's got tremendous accuracy down the field, right? And he's got great velocity on his passes. I know it's hard to wrap your mind around a dual-threat quarterback also being a good passer because usually it's one or the other. But Justin Fields can make all the throws. He's got the accuracy. He's got the velocity. His biggest crimes are he holds on to the football too long and he is too turnover prone. Those are things I believe that with better coaching can be coached and improved. And he did not have good coaching and does not have good coaching in Chicago. Let's wrap up the show with this super chat from Adam. Yo, would love to be a sponsor. Who do you think we draft at QB if we do? I think you're going to see Caleb Williams, Drake May, and Jane Daniels all go one, two, three, which leaves J.J. McCarthy, Bo Nix, and Michael Penix. I don't think any of those guys will be Atlanta's selection at number eight. Of those three guys, I could see one going between picks 12 and 32, and that leaves two guys. And I think that one guy that goes earlier – Maybe J.J. McCarthy, which doesn't sound very allure, you know, alluring, but people are really high on J.J. That's what I'm going to say. I think Michael Penix would be the best bet for Atlanta in round two if they 
don't have a quarterback answer at that point in the calendar. And that's going to do it for us on today's show. Thank you so much for tuning in. I always appreciate those of you that get into our live content and also check out our mailbags and whatnot, which reminds me, use hashtag Falcons in the chat right now if you have a question you want to be asked in the comment section and answered or on a future mailbag here at Falcons Today.